Hi. Now in the previous tutorial in this series I showed you how to solve equations like this where our x term was positive. But the purpose of this video is now to show you how we go about solving equations like this where our x term is now negative. We've got 5 minus 3x equals 4. And what we tend to do in questions like this is to remove our negative x term. So if we took this example here, let's just write it down. We've got 5 minus 3x then equals the 4. Now to remove the minus 3x, the only way we can cancel it out is to add 3x to the left hand side here. But remember whatever we do to one side of an equation we must do it to the other side of the equation. So minus 3x plus 3x gives us no x or nothing and 5 then plus nothing is just going to leave us with the 5. So we therefore have 5 equals 4 plus 3x. So what's happened is that this now puts us back into handling equations where our x term is positive. And we should be used to this now. What we need to do is get rid of the 4. And so the only way we can remove the 4 in this example then is to subtract 4 from both sides. So we've got 5 minus 4. We subtract it from the left and we've already got 4 plus 3x on the right and we subtract 4 from the right hand side. So what that's going to leave us with it then is 5 minus 4 which is 1 equals and we've just left with 3x because 4 minus 4 is 0. And at this stage we now divide both sides of our equation by 3 so as that we can just get what x is. So we divide by 3 because the threes will now cancel one another out giving us 1x over 1 which is just simply x. So we've got a third equals x and we should write x on the left and that would equal a third. Okay? Now it's not the only way that we can do this equation. Some people are going to just leave the negative term there. I wouldn't advise it but it will still work. Um, and I'll take you through that, okay, just so that you can see how it works. So we've got our equation. I'll just write it down again. We've got 5 minus 3x then equals 4. So suppose I just leave the minus 3x there. I need to get rid of the 5 just to leave me with that x term. So to get rid of the 5 I would therefore need to subtract 5 from both sides. And if I did that, we'll just put our equation down again. If I take 5 from both sides, what have I got? Well I've therefore got 5 take away 5, that's 0. I'm left with minus 3x. And 4 take away 5 is minus 1. And what I've now got to do is to get rid of the minus 3 from the x here. So I take my equation minus 3x equals minus 1 and I now divide both sides by minus 3. You can see that what happens here is similar to this but we're dealing with negatives and sometimes that can be awkward and we can avoid it by this method. But nonetheless, minus 3 divided by minus 3, they cancel out, leaving me with 1x over 1, or just simply x. So I've therefore got x equals a minus 1 divided by minus 3 is a plus value, and it's going to be plus a third. We don't need to write that plus in, but we just write the third there. So you can compare these two methods, okay, and make a decision on whichever one that you prefer. But generally, I would go with this, making our negative x term a positive x term. Okay, well, my next example 
is just going to take again a negative x term but what we're going to have is one where the x term is on the right hand side of the equal sign so we've got this example 6 equals 17 minus 7x you might at this stage want to have a go so just give you a moment to pause the video and come back when ready you can check your work solution with mine okay welcome back if you had a go so to do something like this if I continue with the idea of removing our negative x term from whichever side it's on it's on the right hand side here I need to remove the minus 7x so I'm going to add 7x to both sides so therefore what we have is 6 at the moment equals 17 minus 7x and I'm going to add 7x then to both sides so we've got plus 7x here and we'll plus 7x there so what have we got well we've therefore got 6 plus 7x on the left hand side and on the right hand side minus 7x plus 7x is 0x or just simply 0 so we've got left with 17 now we're back to our usual type of equation where we've got a positive x term just need to get rid of the 6 so to get rid of the 6 from both sides I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides so we'll put minus 6 here and minus 6 there you don't have to write all this red stuff that I've done in by the way as you become more practiced in this I'm sure you'll want to keep leaving out the red values that I've put in and just go straight to the next line like for instance if I subtracted 6 then from both sides of this I would end up with just the 7x and then 17 take away 6 well that's going to be 11 and I should be able to go to the next stage without writing dividing both sides by 7 because I'm just going to be with, left with x equals 11 over 7 11 sevenths however I will put it in though just for the sake of it but uh, leave it up to you to make the decision when you want to stop writing all of these stages in so 7x divided by 7 just leaves us with x and we have therefore x equals 11 sevenths and 11 sevenths well rather than turning that into a decimal 7 goes into 11 once with 4 left over so we're left with 1 and 4 sevenths okay so I hope that's given you an idea then how we can go about handling equations then linear equations when the x term is negative the best approach in my opinion is to make sure that your x term is converted to a positive x term okay well if you want further practice on this you should find that my next video which if you're looking on my website will be below this one gives you a summary exercise couple of questions for you to uh, try